Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Bethany and on this channel we talk about the false beliefs taught to women inside of the church and we also shine a light on problematic Christian influencers. So if any of that resonates with you, go ahead and like this video, share with a friend, and always be sure to subscribe. If you'd like to financially support me, you can become a patron and my Patreon is down in the description box below. You'll receive videos 12 to 24 hours early and exclusive videos. So without further ado, Let's get into today's video. Today, we're listening to another Brittany Dawn podcast, Chiseled and Called. And the title of the podcast today is Juicy Girl Chat with My Best Friend. So I think this is when she was on vacation um, in Colorado, I think it was, and all of her besties were there with her, and they recorded a podcast. So, duh, here we go. Fun, faith, friendship, all the Fs, all the great things. You're listening to Chiseled and Called with Brittany Dawn, a podcast about finding freedom in imperfection and peace in your broken pieces through Jesus. Our prayer is that today's message will bless you, embolden you, and fix your gaze on the King, that it will stir up the calling God has placed within you. Without further ado, here's your host, Brittany Dawn. Welcome to the Chiseled and Called podcast. I'm your host, Brittany Dawn, and we are... Girls Weekend. I kind of said that weird. That was weird. We're having Girls Weekend. We're playing a game today called, what is it called? We're not really strangers. So we're going to be passing the mic around and answering these questions and see where the Holy Spirit leads us. Okay. First one. Farron is starting with, what am I most qualified to give advice about? Who wants to go first? <laughs> the blood of Jesus. <laughs> the blood of Jesus and um, your authority in Christ. That'd be my first answer. What about y'all? The first thing that comes to mind is healing, the healing power of Jesus, and just being a preacher. So preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God, and preaching practicals for how to live your life um, biblically. Qualified. Yeah, the first thing that came to my mind was healing as well. You just walk in that authority, and you know that other people can walk in that authority. It sounds like they're, which I could have just missed this, but it sounds like they're saying it about everybody else, not just themselves. Like, are they... Are, are they like just sitting there and someone else says like what they think they're they're qualified for in life and everything has to do with Jesus and healing is that what's like they're everybody else is saying it to the I think that's what's happening as well so you just are very qualified to give advice about that dang I have to go last y'all took all mine <laughs> I'm going to sneak the microphone first next time. I would say, yeah, I would, no, I would definitely say, okay, fashion. Yes. Fashionista, little stylist over here. And then number two was going to be healing because we talked about that today and just how you've walked it out so beautifully and stood in faith when there hasn't been a glimmer of hope. And I just love that about you. And I think that is a huge part of your testimony. Not even, I think, I know. And like getting to watch you minister to people through that is so beautiful. So, yeah. Next one. Do I pick one? Okay. You said to make sure that it's a white one. Yeah. I hate the inflections of their. Well, is it? Oh my God. Just bang, 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 bang. Okay. Oh. Well, that one was on top. Should we already read this? Should we just do it anyways? Or it's the do you believe everyone has a calling? If so, do you think I found mine? Oh yay. <laughs> Say yay. collectively, girls. Yes. <laughs> um, I a thousand percent 
uh, believe that everyone has a calling and I think it can shift and change in different seasons. I believe it's more so like assignments um, is probably a better way to explain it. I totally believe that you're walking out your calling. I know it's going to be bigger and greater, but I know that you're stewarding um, the little very good now. And so God's going to bless you with more. But yeah, a thousand percent, you're walking in your lane and your calling and your authority right now. And I'm just so excited to see how it grows as you continue to remain faithful. What was reminded to me is when we were at Jamie Lynn's conference and they like kept calling out just like your calling in ministry. Um, and I feel like things that you're so naturally talented at, like building isn't necessarily your calling. And so I feel like with everything that the Lord is going to do with like she lives freed and like in you within ministry. Um, that you are walking in your calling. And I also feel like this is like just the beginning of like scratching the surface of it though, of what all the Lord wants to do. You know, number one, I'm a little confused. Now, is it like whoever's reading? I'm still a little, I'm, I'm confused. Okay. Um, this happens a lot in Christian culture and, you know, besties, bestie, best friends of Christian best friend, whatever, is God has so much more to do, <laughs> usually how this is stated, God is doing so much more inside of you. Weird. God has so many more things like planned for you. Like you haven't, like what she just said, you haven't scratched the surface yet. You ha- it, God hasn't even started to do whatever. So then you have this feeling of, oh, there's so much more to come. There's so much more that I have, you know, it, to do in life. You know, God hasn't even scratched the surface. So I have so much left that God has to do. So it becomes this, well, God is going to do more in my life. Like this isn't even the only thing that God has for me. God has so much. And it's, it's never a, like, how do I say this? It's that you, when you are a Christian, even though it is biblical to be content in your life and not saying to not have goals or to not try to reach the next level in your life, but being content essentially meaning not being jealous of other people's lives, which being a Christian, not being a Christian, I think that is a piece of advice of of value that, that you can have. But when you're a Christian, you're rarely content with your life just because you hear people say this stuff all the time and you're like, well, what's next? What does, you know, something even better God has for me? God does it isn't done working in my life. Like, what is the next step? So in my experience, you're rarely content, really, because you're you're trying to, and it's not trying to reach the next goal, but trying to but my question is, how do you know if it, God is just scratching the surface of your life, of your of your dreams, of whatever God's calling you to be? How do you know when that's done? Does that make sense? Like, when do you know God is no longer scratching the surface of your calling and you're actually in it and that's it? <laughs> I do think a lot of people say like this is my calling or this is my highest calling when really all of our, we all have the same calling and you are doing that by bringing people to freedom she was freed we are all called to help free set the captives free and introduce everybody to our lord and savior jesus and that's what you do so yeah Hi, I'm Christy. Okay, literally everybody already said exactly what I wanted to say. So, I, well, I second that. I mean, uh, do I believe everyone has a calling? Yes, and I agree. Like, it goes back to the Great Commission, which is um, leading people and leading the lost to Jesus. That's like our highest calling here on earth and to love God and to love other people. So, yes, you definitely have a calling. If you're listening to this right now, we all have a calling. And then Britt... 
I fully 100% you believe you're walking your calling and your anointing and your authority and you're going to continue to do that. And kind of like Farron said, there's so much more to come just with the connections, the people around you and um, your ministry, like who even knows what is to come. So we know that the best is yet to come though with that. Um, I think I love that you pray for an increased capacity in like every day. I, ha- I admire that. So I started praying that. And I think when you pray that, there are going to be new doors opening and new callings, anointings, whatever you want to call it, um, coming forth and new things being birthed out of you. So I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. What do you got? Okay, so I do want to say there's one area that you're not actively walking in your calling just yet. Be- I will put my paycheck on it being a mom. Because you are called to be a mother. Okay. You're already you're already walking in your calling as being a wife because you're called to that. And you're called to be a mother, which we already know you have heavenly babies. But I am going to be the most ecstatic person on the planet when I see you fully walking in your calling as mama. And see you hold that baby and... Was that a little gross? Did you kind of like cringe when she said... <laughs> When you're walking and holding the baby as the mama, can we not do that, please? That just like felt all over my body. <laughs> Love on that baby, and I, that's I believe one of your highest callings is to raise babies. So, cannot wait for that. Now I'm crying. <laughs> okay, I think it's Christy's turn. <laughs> just make sure the water. Are these three? The question is, what do you- Okay, I just came up with a question. Okay, so it is biblical that God will give you the desires of your heart. Okay, so set that aside for a second. You are also taught in the church that if you are not saved, if you're not a Christian, you are living in the flesh and you have to, even when you're a Christian, you have to daily put on the armor of God so you are not living in the flesh. You are living out your true self because you are covered in the blood of Jesus. Okay, so people, so Christians really think that the the innate desires of your heart are not of God because what you what you really want to do you shouldn't do because that is from the enemy that those are fleshly desires okay so my, my, my I'm getting at my question is here she says that being a mom is a huge desire of her heart and in the Bible it says, God will give you the desires of your heart. So how can she justify her her desires of her heart? I hope this makes sense. The desires of her heart. How can she justify that by the things that she tells other people on social media saying, hey, the innate desires that you want, those are from the enemy. That is not of God. You need to get your heart right with God because... Those are fleshly desires. Does that make sense? So what is that fine line between Brittany Dawn's desires? Because I'm, side note here, put a pin in that real fast. I am not saying that what like her wanting to be a mom is bad, is wrong, is, that's not what I'm saying. So let me get that out there real fast. What I'm saying is, in my opinion, it's another hypocritical thing. Simply because she believes that being a mom is a desire of her heart. Awesome. Wonderful. However, she also states in like during videos and social media that your innate desires are not of God. So where where does that come in? I really hope that makes sense. What do you think my defining characteristic is? That is one to marinate on that. That's a hard one. Defining Ooh. characteristic. <laughs> They're like, oh, God, I don't want to tell her. Oh, no. This, I don't think this is a very truthful 
set of women. Can we get a definition of characteristic? <laughs> like, okay, wait, is it? Okay, so we can be physical. Was that Brittany? Was that Brittany that just asked for a definition of a characteristic? Oh my heavens. Lord. Oh, I was or, thinking mental. I think or, whatever came or to mind first. Yeah. Or it can't be anything. So whatever. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. yeah. I have one that came to mind. Am I even going to go first? Yeah. Okay. So I kind of have one that came to mind. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I admire Christy. I love how precious you are. Precious is one of the words. But no, what came to mind, and this may not be original because you have a tattoo of it, but remnant being like the one person that's going to stick with God no matter what, whether that be just wherever you are, family, friends, church, whatever. Um, and it's like, it's where the Israelites, right? There was that remnant of people who stayed faithful to God, even when most of the Israelites were rebelling or whatever against God. So I think you're going to be always found faithful before the Lord, no matter what you do here on this earth. So, yeah. Okay. So I have to go back to, it's kind of a long story, but how I first met Christy, <laughs> I saw her on social media first before I ever met her in person. And it was a long story. It's the Lord. But the first thing that I noticed about her physically on her social media was her phys physical beauty. You are physically so beautiful and your smile is incredible and contagious. So physically, that's what I would say. Um, but the way that you are so kind to every person you meet I would say that is probably like runner up to your beauty. You're just so kind and and humble. Like the humility that you carry is like. I'm always here for compliments of, hey, you're so pretty, you're beautiful, whatever. But if my friends are saying that my beauty is my high, like my most important characteristic. And she literally just said, runner up is your kindness to people. That should, I mean, you must be drop dead freaking gorgeous because if your non-pretty characteristics, like everything else besides aesthetics, if that's not number one, I feel like that is a reflection on you and or, you know, could be a reflection on the other person of how they see you. But I find that kind of odd. <sighs> Side note. Again, going to tell you, the puppies are up there right now, and I think they are currently getting out of their big-ass kennel, and that's why there's barking. So that's, we're working with it. Unmatched. So your kindness and your humility, um, along with physical beauty, would be my answers. I love the way that you love fiercely, and you stand in the gap. For so many people around you, like loved ones, family, friends, the way that you kind of like we were talking about earlier today, just the way that you trust God and you trust him unwaveringly and so unapologetically for things that, again, like I just mentioned, you might not always have a glimmer of hope for, but you just you're so it, it increases my faith, like seeing the way that you wait and the way that you love the people around you while you're waiting. And you do it with such grace and beauty, and so much beauty. And just you're so eloquent in all of it. It's just, it's, I've, I, it, it checks my own heart sometimes. Like, I'm like, okay, wow, I need to love this person better, love that person better because I see the way that you love others and it just radiates the love of God. So yeah, that would be mine. This is so funny because this is what we do for each other on like our special birthday weekends or any life events. I know, I know, but it's really cool because I feel like it'll show people like that. Are like, how do I love my friends better? Um, like, just speaking life over them and like what the Lord sees in them um, and just like how to do that. But also, the dude, out of all of the girls, her voice, her voice does it for me, dude. I would rather stick my head 
in a freaking wood chipper than to sit and listen to this woman speak. I it it <laughs> dude, I'd rather do so many terrible things I can't handle it. This is really cool because it encourages people to like open up those words like you might be thinking about this about people but actually like speak it to them because it does a world of difference that's what was one of my favorite things today um but i i feel like your most defining characteristic is compassion and i feel like your most defining characteristic did i nail it and because that's like the literal gateway to why jesus did miracles that's why you're gonna see some of the greatest miracles is because <laughs> it's so i thought she was gonna say i thought she i thought she was i thought she was saying why jesus <laughs> and that's why white jesus that's <laughs> what Oh, uh, that's, oh, Jesus. That was funny. <laughs> because of your compassion. And then I feel like it's what you said earlier. It's the way that you weep for us. Like anytime we have a win or a celebration or we're, we're um, battling, we're in that place of like, you're right there with us. And for people who think that, you know, like having that emotion is weakness it's actually like strength it gives others strength knowing that you're right there with us like going through things um and i just it's beautiful so thank you for weeping with us <laughs> thank you for weeping with us oh my god this is like a asmr and i hate i can i don't think i hate i don't think i hate anything more than asmr and it sounds like the mic is right there in her face and she's i can't handle it what jesus <laughs> oh, no. so many other times like i should share with them like the, okay we're here this weekend in broken bow to celebrate farron and her birthday her birthday's next month but we're celebrating this weekend and we wanted to go hiking today <laughs> And we, the Lord literally had us sit in the cabin on the couch in the floor for hours in his presence all together, celebrating and honoring Farron. And we're like, okay, Lord, whatever you want. We just surrendered the day to him. And it was, it could not have been any more perfect. And it wasn't in our flesh what we wanted to do. Because we wanted to hike and we wanted to be outside. It's so pretty. But it was perfect. So good. Wow. That's so good. Oh, Emma? You know what? <laughs> Go for it. You know what? I'm, I'm, okay. You know okay, what? Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, because this, this one's going to be a growing moment for me. I was, I was able to look at a few ahead and I was like, oh, I like that one. I like that one. And so I'm picking the one that um maybe we i don't want to hear but i need to hear and the question is what do you think my weakness is or my weaknesses are or whatever that's a good one right that's juicy so like let's let's have an iron sharpening iron moment here and and sharpen me so let's go <laughs> in love yes in love lord help me i think help me receive you got some i know but i wanna i think well, I love what you said. When I said, like, let's do it, I was saying it to you, say, or Kelly saying, I think we should all be asked this question. It's an iron sharpens iron. If you guys haven't heard by now already, in the month of October, I launched a new business called Hazel and Lane. Seeing what God has done so far has absolutely blown our minds. And if you don't know what Hazel and Lane is, let me give you a 20 second Cliff Notes version. In October of 2022, I had a miscarriage that would forever change a lot of things in my life. But what happened next is something I never would have expected. In my most broken moment, the Lord birthed a beautiful new thing. Just days after my miscarriage, I had an open vision of what I am currently living out with this business, a women and children's boutique. 
One thing led to another, and one year later, October of 2023, that vision came to life. Hazel and Lane were the two names that we had picked out for that child, and now every day is a sweet reminder of the children that we have waiting on the other side of heaven. It's been nothing short of amazing, and I am so incredibly grateful for the way that this community has rallied around this dream. If you are looking for a Christ-focused business to support this holiday season or just want to shop around for yourself, you can visit us at hazelandlane.com. That's H-A-Z-E-L-A-N-D-L-A-Y-N-E.com. And while you're there, you can use the code podcast for free shipping. Every package is prayed over and put together with love. So the reason why I think this is so good for you to ask your circle of friends um, or just people in your life, it's because like, so you don't know how you're being perceived. Like, you know, you think you know how you're acting. You think you know what you believe and what you're projecting, but how you're actually being perceived by other people, you know, that's like a whole other thing. But then also like we can be deceived. And so it's like if somebody else is in your life, they're looking in and so they can see blind blind spots that we can't see. So I think this is actually an amazing question. And if what you deliver, if you deliver it in love, I think it can be like the most like life changing and powerful and, and, and like empowering moment if if you humble yourself and ask people around you like what where do you think i can grow what's my weakness so i love this okay who wants to go first I don't necessarily <laughs> nobody wants to go first to say, well i don't think each of us needs to say each person's weakness like i think it just needs to be like a collective kind of conversation right i think if you just have something yeah i think i think <laughs> and I'm asking the Lord to like give me ears to receive and a heart to receive. Is there something spiritually that I can work on? Maybe that's a better way or or physically or just in my conversation or situational awareness or like how can I be better and grow as a person? Um in re- I think there are tr- they are trying to like beat around the bush so they don't have to say the quote unquote negative thing or what they could work on or they're re I, th- I think they're really really trying not to not to have those conversations relationships or in being a friend or just i don't know i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to start this no it's not weird at all i'm going to start this but um i don't feel like you 100% like how do i say this <laughs> It's very hard because I, oh my gosh, I'm like, I need time to like really deliver this in a, in a beautiful way. No, it's not. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Okay. So we often have conversations and I, I don't feel like you believe in yourself a thousand percent. Like, like I don't, and, but I want to know, like, how do I explain this? But I, uh, so, but I'm like, Holy Spirit, help me. But I just, I feel like you struggle with like seeing um the like the all of the beauty that's inside of you like for real and like everything that God has created you to do. I think you struggle with kind of like being 100% confident in you and God in you. And like we've had conversations and like that's like, you know, just like struggling, um, believing certain things and like, and I'll be like, oh, Emma, like, don't say that, you know? So like the, like verbiage, some certain things that you say, because we know there's death and life in the tongue. So Farron and I both are like, no, 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 Emma, like, you know, so I think probably just not knowing f- the fullness of who God inside of you is and what you were created to do and like, just kind of like really struggling with doubt in, in, or you're too negative, stop self-sabotaging yourself. That's a lot easier. In yourself, when we all know like you are incredible and, and like created to do so many amazing things for the kingdom because the Holy Spirit's inside of you. Um, and then probably words like speaking things aloud um, that maybe shouldn't be spoken aloud. Those would probably be the top two things on my my mind right now. You say, thank you for that. Thank you for um, helping me be better. Um, So when you say, um, 
like uh, having doubt in myself, is there any particular area or just in, just doubting like the power of God in me? Because you said, do you have a particular area maybe? Or yeah, that's, and it, and it's, um, I say, yeah, it's, it's coming from a place of like, we see the calling on your life. We see the potential. We see what God is doing in your life. And like, I know we've had private conversations about like what your future looks like with this and that. And I think sometimes you can get in your head a little bit as we all can, right? We're all guilty of this. I've done this a million. I do it every day. And I think that in that, the enemy can almost come in and use that to, it's, I call it like analysis paralysis where the enemy comes in and you call it that you didn't make that up. That is a very well-known term that you don't, what, what are you doing? Don't act like you just, I, this is what I call it. No, it's not. He uses that doubt to then prevent us from moving forward at all in either direction. And so I think, yeah, that sometimes you can just, you almost like discount yourself a little. And I'm like, Emma, you are literally the most beautiful woman. I'm not kidding. Like you are absolutely gorgeous. You're a, you're a freaking model. You, you are absolutely stunning, Emma. Like you are a 12 out of 10 and we all in this room see that. And so I think what Kelly and I are trying to say is we want you to see that too. And not like a, not like a conceited, like a, a holy confidence, a God, Godfidence is what this so cheesy, but like we want you, yes, we want you to have that too, because you're absolutely stunning inside and out. To answer to what you said, just, I would just want to be sensitive in what I'm like trying to explain. Um, so I think too, you said, is it like an example? God inside of you, I think is a big one. Like not really understanding the multitude of like the power that's literally inside of you. Like we joke all the time, right? We're like, I'm like, why'd you wait for me to pray for that person? Like, I want you to pray for that person, <laughs> you know, but just stuff like that. I think, um, that's kind of more of what I was feeling just the god inside of you to see it you know and that really helps me so thank y'all for that step back Very out christy y'all got anything there's no pressure yeah no don't pressure have. yeah, yeah. This is great. This is I, something I, I should really pray about in the yeah end. yeah Ask the lord because this is like it's kind of hard like on the fly like this because this is supposed to be kind of like a fun thing and this is I'm sorry I, no 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 it's i think this is good i just i want to be sensitive and i don't want to speak out of my own just freaking say it dude every one of those girls this is reality every one of those girls if they have a husband or just a boyfriend whatever they a hundred percent are able to turn to their husband their boyfriend whoever their person is and say oh my god this is what's going on with whoever they're talking about this is like if they were asked by their person well what's her weakness boom right on the fly they would be able to say it i that's realistic i 100 percent believe that they'd be able to tell their person that but they are just overthinking it because they don't want to you know they don't they don't want to step on her toes or be insensitive However, it is, in my opinion, it is so freaking different because she literally asked for it. She asked about, I mean, yeah, don't say, you know, you're a piece of shit and you should, whatever. But I hate, hate, hate when people, mostly women, beat around the bush of something. It would do her more good if her friends were like, this is not meant to hurt your feelings in how I present it. However, give it to her. Like, that, I know that's how I would like to receive it. And I understand other people might be a little different. However, when you are asking this, you have to be prepared. If you do not want, if, if you do not want to receive and or hear what other people say, don't ask that. It's just like putting yourself on the internet. If you do not want negative comments, 
don't put yourself on the internet. If you do not want the scrutiny, don't ask for it. If you do not want other people's opinions, do not ask for it. And these friends, if they are good friends, in my opinion, they should be able to give that to her. And her being that also good friend should understand that my friends are not trying to hurt my feelings in how they present it, what they say. I'm asking this to better myself. So that I hate that. Well, I'm going to have to pray about it of how I deliver. No, just tell her. Just tell her what you're thinking because all of these friends, all of these girls would be able to talk about it to each other and to their husbands, their boyfriends, whatever, if they were to ask, hey, what's your friend's weakness? Boom, they'd be able to say it in an instant. They should have that same energy with her, in my opinion. Own flesh, like I want to hear from the Lord, like, Lord, really, what is, where can I encourage? Where do I see a blind spot? You don't know what I mean? So that's why I just want to be. That is such a huge cop out to not give your own opinion here, to not tell this friend where she is weak because that's what she's asking. That is such a big cop out to not do it because I guarantee you that. Sure, she might have prayed for it and is praying for it now, but that conversation never circled around to, oh, now I need to tell her what her weakness is. No, that never happened. Sensitive to what we're saying. Yeah. I feel like you could always do it if like um, in a moment, like with, with friends, something was like you knew like, whoa, that was out of character. Like that was not right. Like those are those moments like, hey, can I just like share this with you real quick? Um, like t- tell me where your heart was with that. Cause this is the way that like, I feel like it came out or was perceived. Um, so like moments like that, but like kind of like more of like Holy Spirit, show me if there's any like thing hindering, um, with like where I'm at in my life that is like very deep. And I would say, um, a little bit of the same thing. Probably I, I filled the spirit on that, that God like wants to show you so much of how he sees you so that you can walk in that confidence of like who that is because that's who he says you are and that that's who you really are and so just it's so funny how we don't see these things about ourselves um but other people see them and it that's one thing that just like blows my mind just like so many things you guys said today it's 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 not something that's like oh yeah i know that like it's like it's almost like shocking um and so yeah, it's definitely the enemy, but um to but that's another thing like it's funny to 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 tell a weakness, but it's really things that like the Lord's declaring you to What's the enemy? Have they gotten so used to saying it that they insert it into sentences when it doesn't make any sense? Why did she say that? It's the enemy. What is? Walk in. Um so it's so beautiful. Well, and I think this is a beautiful like opportunity to show people what it looks like to like edify and encourage even in moments of growth because that's hard. Like it's but you're not. You're not though. You're using the excuse of having to pray about it and pray for it of the delivery to give your friend whereas you should just tell her. You should just tell her. Hard. Like it, you, you saw the panic on all of our faces. We were like, uh. <laughs> but like yielding to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's never going to lead us astray. And so like being able to speak those those things and moments. And yeah. Do you have anything, Christy? No? You didn't say anything. You literally told your friend that she's not confident in the power of God inside of her. That's not an actual weakness. Like that doesn't make any sense. The only thing that they told this poor girl who's literally asking, hey, can you be a reflection to what? I mean, I think it's oh, I think it's great to ask your friends, what do you think is my weakness? Something that I can work on if you're really available and wanting to receive that. And I think she was. She really wanted to know from her friends what her weakness, uh, what her weaknesses were in all that they could come up with. However many girls are here, at least four or five, I think. The only thing they could come up with was that you are not confident enough of God's power inside of you. That, what? That doesn't help at all. That's not helping her at all. Because everybody doesn't want to talk about it. And they're making it so, sure, it might be an uncomfortable thing. But 
to talk about, but in reality, all of these girls have thought about it already. So again, they already know what their friend's weakness is. They just don't want to project it. They don't want to talk about it because it's uncomfortable. Get over the feelings of being uncomfortable because your friend is asking you this. Get over it. Just tell her. I don't, that is one thing about communication that I, my brain, my brain cannot comprehend is beating around the bush. If I ask you something, tell me straight. Because I'll do the same to you. I don't, I, I cognitively cannot wrap my brain around, I need to talk to God about how to deliver this to you to be sensitive on this matter. Why? She literally asked for it. I, I don't get it. Okay, moving on. Kelly? on moving on but i know I, I do think we should pray about this and do this again for real with all of us i think that's a good with that feedback i'm like okay lord now i know to pray hey lord help me get my confidence in up and my confidence in you up show me practically now how to do that and then i can ask you guys hey how did you have confidence today or this week i have been trying to be better about my words so i didn't necessarily see that so i need to like pursue that even more and ask the Lord to really give me eyes to see these blind spots now. Um, and I think you guys delivered it so gracefully. Y'all are very kind. Like y'all are so sweet. I love it. <laughs> like, and I, I'm the one that asked the question. So like, it's not, I love that we can do this because I think this helps our friendships grow and help us all be like really real with each other. And it's like, if we, Here's another thing, too. If she is, a, a, a weakness could be what she was saying. I do say negative things about myself. Maybe it's about her body or about her goals. Or she says more negative things than positive, for sure. Check that, absolutely. So what these friends should have done before, and hopefully they do now, is is instead of just allowing those things to slide and like we'll talk about it later is if she says something like hey I I don't think that I can do this because I'm not qualified or I think I'm ugly or you know just something negative hey hey friend whatever the hell her name is you're doing it again switch your words because you're being too negative and is bringing all of us down because your negativity. Like, check her. Like, I don't, I don't get, I don't get it. Just check your friend. Obviously, don't be a dick about it. But also, you do not have to be so sensitive about the delivery all of the time. You don't. I, in my opinion, you don't. Don't talk about the hard stuff if we're always just lifting up and which you guys did it in an uplifting, edifying way. But if we're always just like bombing with all the Afro, yeah. And it's like any of us do that, but I get what you're saying. Like yeah. if it's only ever that and no, never like, yes, I tell you, you're a great dad. That doesn't, you're totally wrong in what you're saying, but I fully understand. That doesn't help you. Mine and Kelly's budget is our, our weakness is a budget. <laughs> spoke that you guys need to get a budget get a little spreadsheet action going <laughs> yeah my lord jesus help us iron sharpening iron over here call it call it else y'all there's two really good ones i don't know which one to choose okay well, whatever okay any me holy they were talking about characteristics right? At the very beginning, they were talking about characteristics. Making a budget is not a character trait. I mean, it definitely is something that you could work on, but that is a lot more surface level than like the first girl got. <laughs> Spirit, you are welcome here. <laughs> I don't know. I literally love them both. <laughs> I love them both. Okay. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Okay, okay. So why? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let me get myself together. Uh, why do you think we met? 
I mean, we've talked about this all weekend. I feel like, like, especially with our friend group, we just know that he had this plan from the beginning. We met because it was God's plan. All of us, we met because it was God's plan and he's so divine and he's so strategic and he's so detailed and you need us just as much as we need you for whatever reason. And so we met because God's plan. Well, something practical, I guess, that kind of just came to my mind is, well, spiritual growth is the general term, but something that you prayed for me specifically was to receive my holy language. And that is something that you had. And I feel like because of this friend group as a whole, and also you you just got it going on, Miss Kelly, you know, like I feel like you were part of the reason why I received that gift this year, like a big part. And so that was just one of the small reasons God placed you in my life. And then I really think it is very clear that it it's ministry. It's also just like having fun. I love that you love some the rowback music. You love some like hip hop. We were listening to some like hip hop Christian music getting ready today. And I just, I love that you have fun. And like, I, I love that you're a nurse. So like nothing grosses you out. And um, we just have so much fun together. Um, so I think it's just like fun, faith, friendship, all the Fs, all the great things. <laughs> Wait, that Farron's good S. I'm so sorry. That sound. You know what time is it? It's it's late. <laughs> it is late. So um, I'm a little tired. <laughs> yes. Gosh, flex, flex. Um, <laughs> and then I think one other thing, real quick, is just like to help. You know what I cannot stand? Not just in this podcast, but there are a few other podcasts that I've noticed this in. When they have more than two people and they're doing the podcast or talking to the mic, but then there are like other conversations going on or like, "Uh uh-huh, I can't believe you just did that. Uh Uh-huh. Like, it's not a YouTube podcast. I can't see what you're doing. So, it is very annoying to the listener to help me be more bold to pray for people and to pray for healing and to pray on the spot and to have someone to come into agreement with who I know has the faith as well and who has probably more faith than me in this moment and it's going to increase my faith as we do this together and I think the the more our friendship grows um we're just going to grow in that and that's with all of us our faith is just going to really grow as we go deeper so yeah amen I think we met for a lot of reasons, fun, family, because you're family now. Um, I consider you more family than some actual family, which is just, it's crazy. And being able to say like that, I just never, it's just wild. The way that we met and then when we met and then how God orchestrated all of it in this whole group so purposefully and he was so intentional with all of it. And the way that you as a friend and a sister call us to be bolder and like not bow down and not give in and not back down from the pressures of this world, the things that we're living in with the the crazy times that we're facing. I just love that because it's made me a stronger Christian. It's made me walk with the Lord differently in a more eloquent, beautiful way. And like you're a warrior. You're such a warrior. And it's just like, we both have so many similarities in that. Like we're just, we're strong-willed and we're a little stubborn and we're real sassy and it works. And like finding someone that like, that, (laughs) that is another thing about girls, just girls in general, women that drive me nuts when the it, it's just like if a man says well i'm an alpha man or a woman says well i'm very confident nine times out of ten you're not you're just you just think that you are because confidence can walk into a room and not say anything and you know that they're confident you don't have to say 
one of my greatest characteristics is that I'm very confident. Like, people already know that of you. And it's the same thing with sassy. I cannot stand it. If someone else kind of says it like that, oh, yeah, she's a little bit sassy, that's fun. That's someone else's perspective. But to say that about yourself, it drives me freaking nuts. So when girls are like, (laughs) I'm just super sassy. Oh my god, I'm super confident and super sassy, and I will tell you anything straight to your face. I am very, very blunt. I am, chances are you're none of those things. Absolutely none of those things. Drives me crazy. You're on, like, you're in ministry-wise, like, you've been walking with the Lord longer than I have. So there's so many areas of your walk with the Lord that I'm like, I want that. Like, I want to be able to, like, sit and hear from the Lord and give friends a prophetic download like that. Like, I'm not saying, right, we all could, but just the way that it comes so easy for you. And I think that the Lord is teaching all of us so much through your walk with the Lord and vice versa, right? Like, we all have our own individual walks. But I don't know. I've just, it's so sweet how we're both like stubborn and we're both like just fun and we love God fiercely and the way that you do it with just such a like, I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to give in. That inspires me. And so I think he did it to encourage us and encourage me. Yeah. I feel like mine's the same, but specifically because one of your biggest strengths is one of my like lowest weaknesses in the way that you see things differently than I do. Um, especially with people, there's so many times where you've corrected my perspective. Um, and it was a, an immediate, like it hit my spirit of, Oh my gosh, like I was seeing with the wrong eyes and especially in the area of religion. And I feel like you know that you are made to trample on the head of religion. And that's like the mountain that God has assigned you to of like, we are not going to be in any type of religion because we have been set free. Um, and that helps literally every Christian so much because that that's like one of the biggest ways the devil tries to tempt us is that to get this religious mindset and have such a, just the evil of you're better than other things. And um, it's so beautiful because you don't have any of that in you where nothing is better. And um, your heart is so beautiful. And I feel like that's why sometimes there's such an attack on it and to like grow cold because that's the highest place that you're you're supposed to operate at. Um, and so that's why I think we are put together because... Does Brittany Dawn not think that she's better than uh, other people? Er, uh, I don't think you're quite right on that one, my dear. I think watching her TikToks and her talking about different religions, talking about um, even Taylor Swift and music and Taylor Swift being demonic and the many other TikToks that she's, well, even videos even, that she's put on social media of Christianity being quite literally better than any religion and or the only, but that's one thing Christians don't understand and don't necessarily comprehend is that Christianity isn't a religion it's a relationship but but it is that's I think that's a a, a a little bit of cognitive dissonance because what you're saying doesn't line up with the facts because Christianity quite literally is a religion so when you are a Christian you are being religious but fundamentalists always 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 say, we are Christians. That's not a religion. It's a relationship. We're not religious people. But you are, though. <laughs> but you quite literally are the definition of a religious person. It's so much cognitive dissonance. It's it's quite literally insane. Um, your strength is empowering me in something that I'm weak in. So thank you for always being so strong in that. I love you. <laughs> I have one more thing to add that came to me and it's kind of weird to say this towards a friend which means it's an insinuating it's someone in your general age group we're all you know 
similar ages, but I feel like you're like a spiritual mama. You're like a mama bear. And I'm like, (laughs) on the list of things that drive me crazy, saying a mama bear, that's one thing that makes me want to drive nails into my kneecaps as well. Can't stand it. You're a spiritual sister too, but I'm like, what the heck? (laughs) You're like mama bear. I don't know. So I know. So anyways, it's just precious. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't wait to see you be a wife and a mama. I always say you look like a hot, rich mom because you carry yourself well, you dress well, and you just, you. it's just, it's coming. So I'm excited for that. So yeah, I wanted to add that. The rail that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. This is fun. I, I know. Like I know. Get this game. No, literally. No. This is, this is, okay, even if it's not a Christian game, God designed all of this. Like, God does, like, in, he, you, it's communication. One of the most healthy things you can do is communicate with your friends. Help us. Yes. All right. This one's kind of fun. What about me most surprised you? <laughs> I'm going to say the same thing as me. What? Wait, 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 wait. What can I share on air? and What can I not share on air? Because I got a few. (laughs) Okay, let me, let me, let me. (laughs) Okay, the number one thing I was surprised about is that (laughs) <laughs> is that Farron used to smoke meth and didn't know it? <laughs> she smoked meth <laughs> She smoked meth for a year and didn't even know it. That's what Kelly said. This was way before Jesus. Just need to clarify this is part of her testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> okay. How do you accidentally smoke meth? I understand if you purchase something and it was laced with meth. I can understand that. But how would you not know that you were smoking meth for, for a year? If you did it one time and you were like, oh my goodness, got it. Uh, okay, fine. Just a fine. But a, but a, but a year... They're all so not sassy. They're all so freaking ditzy and make women look stupid. Like this whole girl math era thing. I freaking hate it because it makes women look dumber than a box of fucking rocks. I cannot, I cannot stand it. And girls like this make women look stupid. <laughs> so we found this out. We, we, were talking, <laughs> we were talking about this today. <laughs> Uh, we were like, wait, you did what <laughs> for a whole year and you had no freaking idea? I'm sorry, that's hysterical. Number two thing about Farron that surprised me is that she don't sweat. Okay, we got to open her detox pathways. My number one thing that I didn't know about Farron was that we've known her for how long and we just found out she has a dog. <laughs> no idea. Had no idea that little Emmy even existed. <laughs> I feel like my whole life is a lie now. I love dogs. I mean, not your whole life, but your friendship with your friend. That's kind of weird, right? I feel like they were more of acquaintances and it's something that they just found out because I can't picture a time. Like, I even know the acquaintances that I have, the the animals that they have. Is this the first time that they've ever communicated with each other? Like, how do you not know that one of your best friends has a dog? That's, I mean, it's so surface level, but it's also not at the same time because that's weird, right? Like, am I am I out of pocket here? That's freaking weird to not know that one of your so-called best friends has a dog. I don't, th- all right. I want to love on Emmy. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just agree with all of this. Um, I was literally going to say the meth thing. 
And he used to smoke cigs, right? Like oh, cigarettes. She was a smoker. Um, and then something that surprised me was the fact that you don't shower every day. <laughs> Not in a gross way, but you don't sweat, so you don't have to shower. She glitters, she sparkles, she smells nice. Yeah, and the whole not sweating thing, you really need to get that checked out. And it's on a detox pathways. When you sweat, you're not detoxing your body. Toxins are not being released out of your body. That's false. Draws me nuts. That's not you. When you detox, that comes from your organs and then it's com- it comes out in waste. It doesn't come out in sweat. So whoever says that, just run away because they're wrong. And so they're probably full of more shit. You know what I mean? So if she's actually not sweating, she probably needs to get that checked out. And <laughs> yeah, so all of that, the meth, the cigs, the drugs, the partying. So I think this is a great opportunity, Farron, for you to tell your 30 second testimony. Here you go, ma'am. Y'all just told it. <laughs> you got to tell how he set you free. <clears throat> okay. So I did not grow up in the church or knowing about the Lord at all. And um, so it was very easy for me to be pulled by the things of the world or like I like to tell how um, like the things of darkness and I was doing a lot of those things without knowing. And I feel like a lot of that is because of innocence and you truly like don't know that things aren't like the best thing for you. And so when she speaks her whole lock, like, how do I say it? The whole sentence or the whole paragraph is like one big run on sentence because every, because every word that she says connects together and it's all one big run on sentence. Oh my God. From a really young age, I lost my virginity at 13 and um, had a life full of um, sex, drugs, and alcohol. And I thought that all of that would be something that would just fill this void that never did. Um, and then one day I truly met Jesus and he filled me with his spirit and everything that I once partook in completely like went away from every desire of things. And even a knowledge came of these things that will never satisfy and the knowledge of how really they can corrupt your body, they can corrupt your mind. Mind. Um, and because of Jesus, it was a completely different um, life than I have ever lived before. Uh, well, when I met the Holy Spirit um, was probably about three years ago, so about 30. <laughs> Look at that. We were just talking about this today, and the Holy Spirit just like, Lord's opening doors. Do you, does anyone have anything else? I'm so proud of you, Farron. So proud of you. Yeah, and that's the thing is she is literally like the most, you are so just beautiful head to toe, just like I said, Emma and Christy, 12 out of 10, and Kelly, 12 out of 10. All my friends, like seriously. Well, no, I was saying that because like, Brittany, would you tell one of your friends on your podcast if she was a five out of 10? Come on, dude. That's not being very truthful at all. At all. Every one of your friends is a 12 out of 10. Listen, listen. I know I'm not a 10 out of 10. I totally got it. And I'm not saying that I'm not pretty. I'm not like putting myself down. It's it's called being realistic. I'm here for it. That's fine. You're meaning to tell me that you think all your friends are just drop dead gorgeous 12 out of 10 any man would want to whatever like all of your friends that is a bunch of baloney and you know it. She asked a question and then her question like you are literally the most beautiful put together woman and so graceful and like you glow. And it's not just the highlighter. Like, you literally glow. Yes. And, like, you would never know that that was your testimony. I think that's why we're all just like, what? We were all so shocked today. So, yeah, it's just so beautiful seeing what the Lord's doing in your life. This is a good one. No, but for real, I am shocked to know that you've only been walking with the Lord for three years. It's really, really cool to see that God has done a supernaturally 
um, swift, I guess you could say, work in your life. And Brittany just said, we were so shocked to hear this today. So again, you didn't know one of your best friends had a dog, and then you didn't know one of your best friends' testimony and like what she did when she was younger and how she grew to know the Lord. You didn't know that either. These aren't best friends. Because for where you are right now, for three years, like some people don't even, will never know the Lord like you know him and they've been walking with the Lord for 20, 30 years. So I think that's probably like the most surprising thing is when you meet Farron, you're like, wow, it's only been three years. Um, yeah, because he's grown you up really quickly. This is hard. So I'm going to read both of them to y'all and you tell me which one y'all want to answer. Because I, I genuinely, okay, so the first one is what do you think I should know about myself that perhaps I'm unaware of? Um, so kind of like an, a moment of growth. And the other one is based on what you've seen on social media, does my social media accurately reflect who I am? Why or why not? Oh, stop it. They're going to say, oh my God, absolutely. Everything you put on social media is a perfect reflection of who you are in the real life. You get a lot of hate on social media, but it's because you're spreading the goodness of God. But everything on your social media is a perfect reflection of Jesus. Um, I would say absolutely. Um, because on and off the camera, you seek um, the Father's heart. And what breaks his heart breaks your heart. And you speak that in front of and behind off of the camera. And we have conversations like this all the time. And you just care about the Father's heart. And what breaks his breaks yours and what makes his leap for joy makes yours leap for joy. And you are absolutely the same person. Yeah, I think you do a great job at displaying your whole self on social. Obviously, you know, there's intimate things that you don't share, but then there's also intimate things you do share, which is amazing because it just sets a stage of freedom for so many other women. Like monetizing miscarriages, monetizing miscarriages. Oh, and straight taking an audio from a woman who has an infertility TikTok, used her audio. It wasn't for the world to use. It was her voice and her story saying that the audience doesn't deserve to see her pets, but then also saying she wants to record everything about her future child. And, oh, intimate things. She also talked about her one of her the the very very first foster baby that that she had we knew more about that baby's medical history than what we should have known men who follow you and watch you um and i really applaud that about you because you show like your funny silly side which i love and i love that you show like you and jordan and i love that you show you and your horses and your fitness and your nutrition and all these things that you love and that are very important to you and then your friend group and then she lives freed like you literally show everything and you, everything that you show is genuinely who you are and and what i think is so cool about being at your she lives freed retreat is hearing that's like the number one thing that I hear from the girls when they finally get to meet you they're like oh my gosh she's literally just like she is on social media and then sometimes they'll be like she's even like better than you know what she portrays to be but like they're like you're so she's so down to earth she's so um, real and um, she really is who she portrays to be on the internet and so I love that because I think it can it can really be so easy to kind of like just put a little fake this here and a little fake this there. Um, and it really everything you post, I mean, we know you is real. And I love what you do um, when you share about your grief and your pain. Because I think a lot of people don't share any of that. And I think people don't know how to. And I love that God has given you permission and the grace to do it so beautifully. Because again, it The grace and the permission to also be monetized over all these things. It helps other people be free, which is your whole life calling, which is your whole, I mean, the first question you ask, like, am I walking out my calling? Yes, your calling is to set the captives free and to bring freedom 
to anybody that comes into your your path. And so I just think that's incredible how you have beautifully done your social media and it's done in excellence, but it's just, it's fun and it's funny, but it's real and it's raw and that's what people want to see. Nothing, nothing on her social media is funny. So yes. They don't know funny till they see the reel we did last night. <laughs> Stay tuned for more. <laughs> um, obviously, piggying, piggybacking on that, that absolutely, but I feel like even on social media, that it's the like lowest glimpse of the realist of like who you are because having an intimate relationship of friendship and doing life together. Like we see everything that we see like exemplified in real life because it's it's our everyday life. It's common. It's something that we get to see daily of who you are. Um, and I think that it just is actually so mind blowing how kind you are and your your the kindness of your tone the way that you talk the way that you speak life the way that you will not gossip about women um that your heart is so tender and i love how you um like even on things where i feel like having like a more not like critical mindset but that like i something that i like i we talk about just you're like no like this is the grace and the mercy and like that piece of god's heart which is just one of the most beautiful tender qualities to have when somebody says they're presenting themselves this way and it's so quick to be like calling them on that but you say no like that's not who they are um like even i remember examples of when we're talking about like husbands and stuff you're edifying jordan and you're calling him into who he's the lord has called him to be and it's one of the most beautiful things that you don't you don't go by what you see you go by what the lord says like what we we're talking about with the story of gideon like you are the the perfect example of how god did not let Gideon say all these things. And that's who you are in real life, in every circumstance, and every person you meet, and then how you tenderly care for your people and your family and your friends is like bar none. I mean, such the smallest glimpse that people get to see. So we love you. <laughs> Wait, did you already go? Well, I can't really follow that. That was um, so well said. And I agree with everything 100% like you are the person that on social media that you are here but we get to know you so much more intimately and it's even better and it's such an honor and a privilege to be your friend and you are so kind even when we're like maybe out to eat and someone comes up to you you are just so sweet yeah like the wedding that we crashed um that was on socials last weekend I think right but it's so cool to be a part. Um, and I think, too, something that's very commendable. I love that you said, Kelly, the excellence piece. Your social media is very excellent. Um, and I also love that you run not only your personal page, but Hazel and Lane. And you run She Lives Freed. And you run multiple pages and a YouTube channel. Like all of this requires excellence and it requires a growing knowledge base and it requires constantly hearing from the Lord to be able to put more content out that can help people and set people free. So I think that is just really cool to be around someone who has so much capacity and so much knowledge, who's been doing it for years and who's really made like a global. And I think you even have girls from out of out of the US, right? Who follow you like worldly impact and one that will only continue to grow. So I think it's really cool and it's just really cool that we kind of get to, we get a front row seat, you know? So. Yeah. We can, going? we can, you want to eat cake. Let's eat cake. <laughs> and that, in other words, let's eat cake. <laughs> I love y'all. This was fun. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, no shit. It's fun for you. People boosting your ego up okay so i've been working on something for you and this whole thing um i have two words for it i have two words for it and i think it's pretty impactful and it's um 
really important for us to um, talk about. And it's, it's, it's just this. This podcast was just one big old circle jerk. That's what it was. <laughs> Except for the one girl who asked about her other whatever negative, well, weaknesses rather, which could actually be helpful and n- not just boost everybody's fucking ego. Anywho, let me know what your opinions are in the comment section below. Always remember that you're a fierce and powerful motherfucking woman. And again, go move your body. Go work out. If you are new to working out, just go walk for now. If you have worked out in the past, go go work out. Go in the gym. Go lift weights. You'll thank me later. Again, I appreciate y'all oh so very much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.